Hey YouTube, welcome back. Brand new video build series, and this is part number one, and we're going to be working on this guy, the Great War Hobbies F-15C in semi-second scale. Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to start a brand new build series, and we're going to be working on the F-15C from Great War Hobbies, the 72nd scale kit, this guy right here. So I've done a review of this kit. Um, go back a couple of months to my channel, you'll see, you'll search, you'll see a full review where well, I went through all the plastic and stuff in detail. Um, so we don't need to do that again, but it's um, supposed to be a really nice kit. Not built at the F15 before in this scale, but I built the 48 scale from Great War Hobbies, Eagle, and I've also built the uh, F14D 72nd scale kit. Both fantastic kits really enjoyable builds and I expect this to be none, no different. Um, it should be really nice. I'm not going to go with the box art right here, the Oregon National Guard. I'm actually going to go with a um, Lake and Heath jet. So I'm going to go with the Caracal decals CD72074. There's a number and it's basically the, the mod greys. Not sure which one yet. There's what one, two, three, there's four different versions. It'll look pretty similar to be honest with you. Um, we'll pick one near at a time, which actual jet we'll go for. To go along with that, I got the Aero Masks vinyl mask set. Um, so it makes things a little bit easier. It's so basically it's just vinyl masks, if you can see that. And what you basically do is a little counterintuitive, you basically paint the dark colour first, you put on the masks, and then you spray over the light colour. So when you peel the masks off, it, it gives you like camo pattern. Um, use them before in plenty of different aircrafts, and you know, don't jinx it, but they work pretty good. I, I really enjoy using these. It makes things a little bit easier having a mask. Along with the same theme, I have the Edward mask set for the canopy, CX564. In semi-second scale, it's, um, oh, I don't like masking canopies anyway, but in semi-second scale, it's a little too fiddly for me, so I always go for die-cut Edward mask sets. They get a little bit, more, a little bit expensive now up there in price, but still, the time it saves you, I'm a big fan of them. Um, this one is actually for the J, the F-15J from Great Wall Hobbies, the Japanese version, but the Japanese jet is essentially the same as the C. It's just a few little tiny minor differences. In terms of the canopy, it should be identical, so um, we should be fine with this. I don't think they currently make a um, R set for the C, but to say the J should, should be the same, single seat, both single seat variants. And the only other thing, go wrecking for my spares um, pack right there, I do have a resin seat, an Asus 2 resin seat in this scale, and that's from Neo Amiga. You got like a seat tiny. Um, tiny little semi-second scales. It has nice has the seat belts molded in too, which I'm a big fan of. Um, so not a given. We'll go for a kit. Like the last few builds I've done, um, I, I, well, resin seats used to be no-brainer. Every single like mask set and resin seat, every single kit I used to pretty much do that. But some of these modern kits recently, I've been building natural plastic kit seats, and nice in the resin, um, taking count the um, Tamiya F16, the 32nd scale one, I bought the resin seat and that was nowhere near as nice as the plastic one in the kit. A um, few other ones I've done too, I've just ended up using these kit ones because they turned up nicer. So we'll wait till we get to that part and we'll make a determination whether we're going to use the resin seat or not um, and go from there. So that's pretty much it. So as always it's going to be a multi-part, um, each part's going to be a different theme. So it's good for reference, if you just say interest in decaling, just turn to decal section, um, decal part. Um, they will go up every Friday as always, um, every week, every Friday till completion. Not sure how many parts this one is, but they typically run from about four to eight parts. Um, being semi-second scale, probably about five or six parts, I, I guess, but we'll, we'll see as we go through how much work's involved in the kit and break it down. Um, so that's pretty much it in terms of an intro. So today, this week, we're going to work on the um, cockpit tub. As I always, one jets always like to start with the tub first, so let's go ahead and switch the camera down and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first thing I did was to take the corrections sheet, this guy, and I went through the whole instructions and basically just marked on, you see in pen here, all the correct numbers on here. There's tons. These are basically just typos in the instructions. Um, so welcome to Great War Hobbies. This is what it's all about. I think the new ones look better. The F-14A Tomcat, I don't think it has any correction sheets. So they are getting better. But any of these from a year or two ago, um, I guess from 2019, um, 18, and early 20, 2020, 2020, um, yeah, hot mess of instructions. So you get this big correction sheet. 
basically it gives the parts and all the, this is the correct numbers and if, like for example if you look on the instructions here um, let's pick, like this is I wrote, wrote over it, whatever it is so it's V4 is the correct one and see it says V4 here it looks like it had maybe V1 or something I've turned it into a 4 so basically what is I went for all instructions the whole instruction book all these you know, it goes up to part number what 19 so I went for all the parts and just updated instructions so I can kind of basically get rid of this so I don't need this anymore so just so I'm running with the right part numbers so that kind of gets you on like a even playing field so first section is to make up the cup itself which is very detailed um, being single seated um, it has all that kind of avionic stuff in the back which is really well detailed which we'll see in a minute and um, has nice decals for the instrument panel and the side panels here for all switches and stuff so here's I've kind of built, cut them all apart, cleaned them up, and kind of made the sub assemblies already. Um, I put on this like blue sanding thing so you can kind of see it a little bit better. Hold it closer, and you can just see how that detail. I mean, it's beautiful detail. See that? And the instrument panel. So. Yep, so built those up. So what we need to do now is the resin seat. So how I cut resin. So this is the seat I'm gonna use the this is the Neo Omega resin seat. There's you know you do this and they always come in these like resin blocks. No matter what a, what a company you buy it from, they always come in like resin casting blocks and you cut this off very carefully. So first look at my cutting mat, I put down a piece of paper towel. This has been under the sink, um, just damp, so it's you know to catch the dust. I'm gonna put my piece on there and whenever dealing health and safety whenever dealing with resin I always put my mask on just because you're dealing with these these get in the lungs it's not very good use I mean we're only talking about tiny amounts of dust it's not like we're dealing you know all day every day like like asbestos plant you know plants and stuff back in the day but it's still dangerous and you don't want to get this stuff on your lungs so when, whenever handling resin dust we want to put our mask on we're using the paper towel the wet paper towel to catch any dust and as soon as we're done we're going to clean all the tools up all everything away and before we continue any other building so let me put my mask on okay and actually put moss up to, so you can hear me i'm just so i used to cut it a zona saw z-o-n-a now it looks expensive has a wooden handle and a very sturdy you know thick tool but you can actually pick these up for less than five dollars i got mine from scale, Hob scale hobbyist hobbyist um here in the u.s and i think it's like maybe like under five bucks so not very expensive at all but these are perfect for cutting through resin if not you can use um those kind of like cutting saws um, there's like razor saws, that kind of stuff, but I do like using these chunky kind of saws for getting rid of the cutting blocks. So let me put my mask back on and let's get rid of the um, the junk from blow, blow to the seat here. All right. So I'm just gonna line up, see where the bottom of the seat is. And just cut. And there it is. It doesn't take much because it's such a small, small piece, right? So, I mean, I left it a little bit on deliberately, and we're going to go ahead and sand that. So, I'm going to get the paper towel, the other side of it wet, clean up any dust, clean the saw, and being, you know, 70 second scale, there's hardly any dust or anything to this. If you're cutting a bunch of 30 second scale stuff for 48 then obviously you got you know more more cleanup but so that's it so what what i'm left with now is a little kind of see bottom here just a little bit to sand off so i actually have a a small kind of hobby size um belt, belt sander in my garage so i'm going to use that in, in literally two seconds that's going to be a way to be clean you could use the sanding stick um but like i say i with a belt sander it's just and it's done so um We'll do it that way. Let me just check first, make sure it's going to fit. And yeah, it's going to fit nicely. So, before I spent too much time cleaning, so I'm going to make sure it does fit in the cockpit tub, and it does, because um, not all resin seats do. Um, you can see it's a really nice seat. Um, again, Neo Mega, but you know, Aries do them. Um, True Details. There's tons of Edward. There's tons of people who make resin seats, but nice little upgrade, I think, especially with a single seater jet. So, 
there you go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and sand this down, belt sand it downstairs. Um, we'll come back and we'll start priming these up because we're going to paint them separately. So obviously these little panels and stuff here are going to be a lot easier to paint separately before we all glue it together. So we'll get all primed up and um, we'll come back and we'll go from there. Right, so everything has been primed. As you can see here, I'd like to use these like popsicle sticks, a little, little white tack on the back to attach all my parts. Zooms in, and then it makes it easy to paint. So I sprayed all that, primed it, and then I see I use I use a little bottle top again with a little white tack, prime that guy too. And because because on the inside of the aircraft, once it's built, you're never going to handle it. It's going to be you know it's not like on the outside you know, where you pick it up or whatever it wears. So I don't think you need necessary I don't necessarily use a real primer per se. I just use XF19, a nice neutral gray color. Um, just to prime these these kind of parts. I like Mr. Servicer, for, you know, generally, but when it comes to the cockpit stuff, again, it's just you're not going to touch it. It's just it's enclosed. So this is primed. I'll let this dry a little bit, and then, as always, we're going to paint U.S. modern U.S. Air Force is dark gold gray, which is FS three six two three one or MRP one hundred. I say it every video, every modern jet video I use, I use this paint. Um, this lasts a lifetime. I literally like half a mil probably will cover the whole thing so the gift it keeps on giving this is dark gold gray um, for the interior um, and I use it for every single modern aircraft um, USAF um, or Navy aircraft um, it's dark gold gray now let me just move this to the side and let's talk about before we start painting so obviously the main color is obviously going to be dark gold gray but then the avionics boxes and stuff in the back are going to be black so I just want to give a shout out for these books here this is the Modern Eagle Guide, second edition, um, F-15 Spike Strike Eagle Exposed from Reed Air Publications, and the author is Jake Melampy. Melampy, M-E-L-A-M-P-Y. These books are fantastic. Also, Danny Cormans, Cormans, I think it is, C-O-R-E-M-A-N-S. Um, he does fantastic. The two of those guys, they produce the best reference books. Not always cheap. Um, I picked this one cheap on eBay. The Super Hornet one goes for like over a hundred dollars. Um, it's a couple hundred bucks sometimes. It's just out of print. These go out of print and they get very highly in demand. Certain certain ones. So pretty much they do the Eagles, they do the Hornets, the, the Vipers, the, the Thunderbolts. Um, pretty much most of them. Um, modern U.S. stuff they do between them. Um, that's that's just the one we're doing. The scheme here. So it gives an idea of what we're working on. Um, but if I just kind of just show you here, so just it's just chock full of pictures um it's just amazing reference pictures in here so this page here is the f-15ac cockpit which we're doing um so if i turn back a couple of pages here this is kind of where is it um, that right there it's gonna be hard to focus see the box avionics boxes right there so that is this so you can see how detailed it is so this really gives you gives us a good idea of how to paint it um especially if you build a lot of the same aircraft like i do a lot of u.s modern stuff it is handy nice to have these in the in your, you know in your book collection again it's just tons of pictures and it's not just to see if i go forward it gives go turns into b and d then it goes into the E, I think. Yep, the E cockpit. It's not obviously not the cockpit when you move on it has you know, every single pretty much part on the aircraft you can think of is in this book. You know, it's just amazing detail, just full of pictures. And um, somebody like me loves books of pictures. This is perfect. Um, again, just picture after picture. Highly recommend these books. So this, yeah. So I'm using again. And if you want the ISBN, I'll hold it up and you can pause it. There you go. So, Alright, cool. So, we, as we can see, um, there's quite a lot of little panels and avionics and stuff to paint. So once this is dry, we're going to head and paint. I'm going to paint dark gold grey for the main base colour, and then we'll start picking out um, hand painting and all these extra little details and stuff in a minute. The instrument panels and the side switches right here are all beautiful decals, which will, which I've in the past with salt, micro set and salt really bed down around all the race detail and look really nice. Um, which is what I found with Great Wall Hobby. So fingers crossed it'll be exactly the same. So 
let me, like I say, let me let those dry just for a couple of hours or so, and then we'll come back, we'll paint those dark or gray, and then we'll work on a detail painting. Okay, so we're painted up, and look at your reference pictures. The back here is actually kind of the bay behind the seat, the cockpit area. It's actually like an off-white, so it's basically, I basically used white with a touch of buff in it, get that kind of cream off-white. Hand painted the details, not that you can probably see any of this, it's to be honest with you in this scale. And then same, these guys, hand painted those. It's very dark grey, XF24 for like the, um, these panels right here. What it looked like with a green kind of um, cable. On the other side, black avionics boxes. Focuses. With a little bit of dry brushing, um, with metallic, just give it some kind of worn effect. Again, you're not really going to see any of this stuff. It's so tiny. Um, and that's about it. So that's now this it looks pretty plain right now, but this is when the magic's going to happen. We're actually going to add the decals to the um, the tub and it's really, really going to make it pop. So first of all, I'm just going to get my piece of decals right here. So we're going to have four decals we're going to use for the cockpit. Put it in some hot water. Okay, put it onto my mat and just let it kind of, um, just kind of a few seconds for it to soak while we're doing that. Um, so I just, the back, that back avionics bay, which is kind of dirtied up a little bit, I did wash already, um, weather it using my Agraph Earth Shade Citadel. So basically a brown acrylic wash. I do really like these Citadel washes. I have um, the Nolan Oil, which is black, I have the Earth Shade, which is brown, I have the flesh color too. Um, but the black and the brown, really great for like gear and um, cockpit tops, that kind of stuff. Anyway, so still waiting for that one to go off for a couple of minutes. So what we're going to do is get my brush. We're going to use Micro Set, which is first, and Sol, which is number two. It seems the way it's labeled, you think it's the wrong way around, but it's, it's set first, then Sol. I do put them top in the Sharpie, one and two, so I make sure I get it right down the right order. So blue, which is the set, I'm just going to dip my brush in and just rub a little bit where we apply the decals. So I'm going to apply them on there and on the instrument panel. Actually, I'm going to just stick this on a bit of a popsicle stick so it's a little bit easier to handle. Okay, all over. This is going to help it um, kind of grip. Okay, I'm just going to take that decal, just kind of apply it. Make sure I've got in the right spot. And the other one. I'm using Tamir's decal tweezers. I love these guys. They're so um, they're kind of flat and really nice to use with decals. And this, fortunately, I painted the the throttle box black first because these just kind of fit round it like that. Just gonna kind of prod away at it and get it in the position I want it to be. Mount there. Then you can kind of see switches and the main instrument panel. It's going to take a little time just to line this up. It's going to be, you know, where you can see it in the camera, but let's make sure it's on pretty good. Just playing a little bit more on the surface and this one just seeing where it goes exactly. It looks like
Okay, it looks like it kind of sets in underneath those large buttons at the bottom. Again, just want to make sure it's all flat and straight. Oop. A little bit too much. So I'm just going to use a Q-tip. I think that is it. Again, sorry, it doesn't make great television. It's just I want to make sure it's lined up properly. Something better. Okay, I think that is good. Let's drain a little bit more. See how nice that looks. No way you can this scale you can paint it or anything. Um, the decals really make a big difference. So they're on. I'll just check again. Not quite happy, it's quite straight enough. Let me just straighten it up a little bit more. Okay, so happy with that. Um, so, check this one again. Make sure it's straight and it looks good. Yes, it does. So, I'm just going to let those dry for about 10 15 minutes and then come back in with a sole, the number two. Um, I just want to make sure they grip and really stick down because if you, you don't want it moving around again. So, give it 10 minutes or so, but I'll come back and hit it with a sole. Then, nice healthy dose with this. Not too much, just nice covering over all the decals and what this is going to do is going to suck it all down the decal all the way down into that plastic so all that molding the switches and all the um, bezels and stuff behind it it's really going to kind of suck it all in and, and give that 3d effect um, if you don't get it the first time um, give it another hour and then just apply another coat and two or three coats will be no hopefully one but if not two or three coats are easy to get this um bedded down so it's tight again just let me just check make sure it looks good make sure it's straight yep so I'm going to let that one go and that one. So yep, so let, let go 15 minutes or so and then add the sole and then it's going to, then we'll come back and we'll look how the um, instrument panel is looking. Okay, so I've switched my camera lens to a macro lens so you can really kind of see close up this, this cockpit detail. Um, so it's going to be take a little bit longer to focus and it's more of a stills rather than a videotography camera um, lens. But here you go. So I put basically decal sit down bed, better down beautifully and I've just put and glued this in perfect fit you really glue it just clicks in to be honest with you the tub so if I hold it back here focal length you can kind of see the, how it's really kind of gone around all the instrument panels and stuff again this is super tiny because you're thinking really realistically this section right here the carpet tub is probably about a centimeter by a centimeter in size so it's, we're looking talking about super tiny so Put switch this camera lens so you can see a little bit more of the detail. Hopefully, the buttons and stuff. So that's why I really like this great wall hobbies kit. So not only have great detail, but the cockpit decals are really nice, and it really makes the whole cockpit cockpit tub pop. Especially once we have that seat, and it's really going to make it look good. Um, don't need to really weather the inside of this one because, once I said, once the seat goes in, it's going to take up the whole tub basically. So that's that one. So what last thing I'm going to do for I button this up, I just want to make sure make a couple of these kind of um, instrument make sure it focuses a couple of these like little instruments right here I just want to make sure get, um, give it a little like glass effect kind of make it look 3D so I'm going to use crystal clear which is a PVA glue which dries clear and this is great for instrument panels because it really kind of makes it can give that kind of glass effect so I'm just going to dip a cocktail stick in I'm literally just dabbing on the decals. I'm sorry, it's not probably not going to be focused real good, but I'm going to get the idea of what I'm doing. So I'm just the screens again a little bit more. I'm just picking out some of these little instruments. I 
and and that is good just to give you a little bit of effect so just kind of made it on a little bit a certain when the um the glass is going to be all right so we're done with that so now we'll go ahead and glue, and glue these two halves together so i test fitted it and it's a really nice fit so it's going to rub some glue around the sides it says tons of like little tab tabs and joining parts right here so expecting a really nice fit And there you go. Give me a couple of pins just to kind of pegs to hold this together. And there's a completed top. Again, I'm using this macro lens, so I apologize for the focusing and stuff, but at least you can get kind of gets you a better idea of detail. So if you can see inside, again, we're looking it's talking about semi-second scale here. Mm. It's just really nice. And the bottom here, there's really no seam lines, it really nice weight mm. weight all goes together down here. So let's let that dry and then now we're going to work on getting the, the seat done. Right, so here on my phone you can see a really good reference picture. Just basically googled Asus 2 seat. This is what I got. Um, really clear to see the colours. It has a black seat cushions. I understand the early ones had the green, the later had the black sheepskin. So using that as my guide I went ahead and painted the seat, which is going to be, again, super tiny. Um, I'm using this macro lens so you can really kind of see it. But basically used for the main color, I used XF53, which I sprayed on. Mm -hmm. And after that dried, I came back with, it, with the hand painting, which I used model color for hand painting. I think I used khaki for the straps. Mm -hmm. Now, full disclaimer, if you guys know, but I am actually colorblind, so if you want to use my colors, you know, mm -hmm do so with my warning. I, I basically look at pictures and look what looks similar. So I think I'm pretty good, but if anything looks way out, then just my disclaimer. So just, it is what it is. So there's my car key. I used middle stone for the, for the fire extinguisher. Well, this tank, cylinder tank on the side. I don't know exactly what type of cylinder it is. There it goes, I'm too close to the camera. Middle stone. I used dark rubber. For the actual seat color, I like. I don't like to use pure, pure black. I like to use slightly off black, like NATO blacks or um, rubber blacks, that kind of thing. So I brush paint dark rubber. Getting a little too close. Um, for the seat cushions, mm -hmm. the top part of the, the thing, I for the top part of the seat, I use just regular black. Mm -hmm. Then a little dry brushing with steel. This is my favorite model air. I love. The, it's an airbrushing paint design for, but it just hand paints so well. So the hand painting, hand painting little detail, highly recommend model air. It's great. So this time I use steel for a little um, dry brushing, and um, I think I used the same color just for the the buckles on the tiny little buckles on the straps. Then finally, um, give it a wash. This time of non oil. So we talked about this these Citadel's washes earlier in the, um, this episode. So I just use a black for the seat the non oil mm -hmm. so that's the kind of collection of colors right there and again the seat mm -hmm. you can see it there it is and you compare it against the size of my finger it's you know it's tiny so resin seat looks really nice um, again this is a it's a Neo Amiga Oops, it dropped it. That's okay. Um, yeah, so again, two things. Firstly, with seats, I always like the white tack, mm -hmm. stick them to a bottle top. This makes it easier to kind of handle, maneuver. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, really good. And then mm -hmm. secondly, I hand paint these. Um, find it easier just to hand paint them. I really like seats with the molded in straps. Just makes it a little easier um, than having to do photo etch and stuff. And then basically how you do that is, just with the side of the brush, just very carefully kind of you know, to get the raised areas, almost like a dry brushing. Um, and that's how you get the painting done. So there you go, so that's 
go ahead and put her in the cockpit. So I'm going to move all this bit out of the way. Just going to use a tiny bit of white glue on the bottom. Um, it's going to be, once it, this goes in, it's going to be pretty much secure, but just so it doesn't jingle about or anything, we just add a little bit of white glue. Okay, there we go. And it's a perfect fit. It's not is it straight. Let me see. Just make sure it's straight and a little bit to the left. Just checking, make sure we're in straight. Mm -hmm. I think we are. So this makes it the reason how this peg on still it, it keeps it upright so it doesn't roll around. Um, these kind of easy to hold, I guess, too. So there we go. That's this finished. We finished the cockpit tub and a little avionics bay behind it. Again, we're talking about super tiny scale. If I just put a regular ten millimeter Tamiya pot next to it, you see, get an idea of size right there. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can kind of see. Again, I'm using the macro lens so you can kind of see the seat in. Hold it back a little bit. See a lot of detail and really nice decals that went down beautifully as always with great war hobbies. And these, these copper decals are really good, I love them. We'll the to seal the buttons and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, it's kind of a little bit hard to film because it's so tiny, like I said, but that is it. So, we've completed the cockpit tub, which is a lot of the work. Um, seats in, um, somebody's got a seat later. I just did it right now while I'm at it. So, we've done that part. So, I'm gonna wrap this video up and um, we're pretty much done. So, we'll come. We'll come back next week and work more on this aircraft. It's so far so good. It's beautiful. Um, zero. There's a few few different parts in the bottom here. You don't see any seam lines at all. Um, wheel well went, and that's like this here is actually a separate piece, but again, it just fits perfectly. Um, so really good so far. So fingers crossed. The rest of it's going to be as nice as this. So yep. Yeah, so we'll be back next Friday for next part. Uh, as always, thank you for watching and appreciate all your kind comments and stuff. And until next time, have a good one. Stay safe. Bye-bye.